What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Plus a Cold One, brought to you by Man Food Certified. And as you should know by now, Man Food equals me overheat plus a cold one. And I'm going to start this one off with a question. What happens when an Army War veteran incorporates his Samoan heritage into his healing process? You get amazing artwork with a lot of connective tissue. This is my man, Jay Manga, and we're talking Broken Warrior Designs plus a cold one. Hey man, so first of all, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough memory on my card to go through all the things that you've done and continue to do. But the one thing that I do know is you got 138 job mine. Yeah. You do everything, <laughs> man. And, and we don't got time to talk about it, but the two things that fascinate me the most are one, your Samoan heritage, and two, your military service. And it's interesting because these all came full circle into what we're gonna talk about today. But I gotta tell this story, man. When I first met you, I don't know, we, we, we debate about uh, how far we go back, but we know it's elementary, early elementary yeah, school. Third grade. Yeah, and uh, uh, I remember wondering, damn, how does this white boy have such an amazing afro? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he had the crazy nice. locks. And I was like, damn, yeah, I don't You got a it. picture of that to yeah. add up in that job. Oh, man. Yeah. We got to pull one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he was Samoan, man. You know what I'm saying? And so um, it wasn't until later on. And then I remember you telling me you wanted to take me uh, to Samoa for a summer with you. And I'll be like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm down to go. I'm down to go. And then you showed up one day with this orange box. And you go, here, start working on these. And those were Samoan flashcards. Vocabulary. Yeah, so he was serious about it, and that's when I got mm -hmm. nervous. I was like, yeah, bro, I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> uh, uh, but, yeah, you were serious, and you would go back every summer. So the one thing that I really wanted to start off with, and I kind of want to do Samoa military service, and then we get into the, 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 yeah, the art my form. Action, one of my questions was going to be where. Where? Where? where, uh, where was well, from, not just that. We, we could start from now. I mean, because you're, you're a Samoan chief. Yes. All right, so. Um, and that's pretty significant, you know what I'm saying? But let's go back and let's talk about um, um, the beginnings. Like, uh, 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 you're Samoan, uh, I guess yeah, yeah. you would call it, say, half Samoan, or you would say Samoan? In Samoan, they call Afakasi. And uh, that, um, my mother's German, my father's Samoan, mm -hmm. and uh, they divorced when I was three. So Afakasi. Yeah, Afakasi. It's half, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you were saying that uh, there's a word for uh, uh, there's a word my sister calls me is palangi toy. So we call white people palangi, and palangi toy is a fake white, a fake white boy. Mm -hmm. So you're not really white because you're Samoan. So you're like a you're fake white unless uh -huh. you show the tattoo. Yeah. 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 You show the tattoo. Like that's wait a, a minute, that's like a weird kind of compliment, like a backhand compliment <laughs> in a way. A like you know, you're one of us, <laughs> but you, you know, she's older than your sister. No, my younger sister. Yeah. I'm your younger sister. <laughs> yeah. So, so when I when I uh, when we were little back then, uh, Dad got a job at, at we got out of the Air Force back home in Samoa uh, with Starkist Tuna, and so he moved back and wanted to get back to his roots. And Mom stayed here. So uh, turn him up because he's comfortable yeah, where he's at. Yeah, yeah. The, we'll turn the agreement <clears throat> was that Starkist would fly us back first class every summer and every break. Um, you know, as far as part of the agreement for right. him working there, chicken of the sea. Uh, no, no, tuna? not chicken of the sea. Star kiss tuna. Oh, okay. um, it's that is uh, isn't that chicken, chicken of the sea? That is yeah, chicken, chicken of the sea. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was bumblebee. A hockey bumblebee, no, bumblebees. <laughs> yeah, bumblebees. Big different. company, man. Yeah, yeah, Plenty big. Good Aren't fish, they right off, right down off of Miramar? No, that and I and I remember San Diego. They took a bunch of their fleet from here, their Persaner fishing fleet, and relocated them in Samoa. That was their main hub. Oh yeah, that's, that's where all the, the big was. tuna is. Okay, yeah. that's where the tie and you were going back there what every summer? Uh, yeah, every summer. Or I lived back there. So so like uh, what we were talking about, like fourth grade. Yeah. I went all the way. I went back there after summer. I just spent summer there and then stayed there that year and then came back. It was either fourth or fifth grade. And then sixth grade, I know we were together in sixth grade. Yeah. And then seventh here at that was, Tula That was June. a booty grabbing Yeah, yeah uh, that year. was a booty grabbing year. Yeah. And that's when we we started noticing girls. 
<laughs> and Dave started slapping butts on the school bus coming home. <laughs> But first of all, I was following look, him around all the time. First so yeah. if, anyone, if, if anyone was slapping butts, he was doing it first. And yeah. I was the one that doing it very inappropriate and disrespectful. Yeah, we can't do that anymore. But. Uh, so <laughs> used to be okay. So yeah. I, I, lo- I learned <laughs> a lot. When you're in Samoa, you do the Samoan chores. You do. There's no TV, right? TV uh, comes on at 5:30. Close. Uh, it turns off at 11:30 or 12. Uh, the last show on is Days of Our Lives, mm-hmm. and so you got to watch it if you want to watch something. Yeah. TV was only on like in the evening, right? Because oh, all the good. kids would stay home from school and watch TV if they had oh, it on. Gotcha, so, gotcha. so they cut it off. Um, Shit, that's probably the way it should be. Yeah. Right. The chores yeah, were very actually, manual. <laughs> you know, you do uh, you you come home from school, you prepare for for dinner by cooking. So that's how I got some cooking skills. Yeah. Because all the men cook over there. The women don't do the cooking. The men do. Mm-hmm. That's the primary. One of my first, and when you talk about Man Food Certified, one of my first experiences was with this dude. And every time I was with him, and we would talk a little bit about how when I was in uh, 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 Oklahoma okay. and I was enlisted in the military, he calls my phone and says, uh, is, he wants this, he leaves a message, well, I want to speak to Airman Billups. This is Lieutenant. So, I don't know. what the, I couldn't hear his last name. So I was like, oh, he call me at. Five five five, whatever, right? <laughs> so I call him up, man. And I'm nervous, man. I got this lieutenant leaving messages. I'm like, uh, this is A1C Bill of Columbia. He's like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, uh, sir, I don't know. He's like, what's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, uh, we, he he always had a way of looping me back into his life, man. And every time we used to hang out, this dude was always cooking. And that was like one of my first experiences with just that whole feel of, of the home cook. That's one of the reasons why I gravitated towards it man trying to recreate that experience you know what i'm saying well you know that's a that's a cultural thing because in samoa if you come to my house we need to feed you and you don't just eat once you eat twice and you take Mm -hmm. home thirds and if you're Mm -hmm. not happy with the food because we don't have much to give you Uh but i can give you food and so that's how they show their love so that's cooking is yeah so so uh you went back every summer and then you stayed there and ended up skipping a grade like, I remember you came back and you were in the next grade. Yeah, you know, I, test, I tested out of uh, mm-hmm. eighth grade. You grade. Tested out of eighth grade, yeah. went to tenth. Tenth grade was too much for me three weeks later. I went back to ninth, so I had skipped eighth. Yeah. And then uh, came back here to Chula for my tenth grade, eleventh grade, twelfth grade. Went back there for my first year of college. Then I joined the Army. You joined them. Yeah, so, so, so what was it like, I mean, being from, basically being of Samoa, but still I mean, basically looking like a white boy, or does it matter in Samoa? Does that even come into play? Oh man, it's rough. <laughs> That's what, the only fight I ever lost was to another Samoan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My first black eye after baseball practice. I was boxing him though. I was doing really good, and and. Uh, well, he, he connected one, and I saw it took her. I was swollen <laughs> <laughs> when I was like, all right. But then we shook hands, and yeah. we became friends yeah. after that. It's, it's got to be to the, sim- the, the culture similarly to being African-American and having a white a white dad and a black mom. Yeah. Um, you you fall in different categories. Either you fall into the dark black person or you fall into the lighter-skinned black person. So, I mean, in Samoa, in Samoa, is it like that for you being, you know, fair skin? They look at you like as you know a, a white boy. You gotta prove yourself. You're you, you, you a wh- whiter skin, you know, someone. Right. You know, like you have to prove your heart is really yeah, with the culture. Similar, right? So yeah, because you you stand out. You yeah. Stand well, out. when so, I first met you, I didn't think you were Samoan. Yeah. I thought you was a white boy until I saw the tats. I was like, oh, yeah. oh we got an islander <laughs> right here. Yeah. You know, you could tell then. I was figuring it out. You were mixed. You know, you yeah. know, Someone on the, you, either side of your family was white, and then obviously someone was Samoan because right. you could see the the, the culture and in your tattoos and your ink. So right. you know that's authentic. And then you start eating your food. Then yeah. you're like, oh. Oh, yeah. So he came right. out that loud loud. Ooh, that you loud, remember loud. that loud, loud. That was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was pow, pow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you came out to uh, the tailgate, man. Uh, P4, Bow Pride, Low Blow Bullies, all there, man. It's a beautiful uh, time. I miss it. But that was I got I got a little bit of that on video, and you came out and did the loud loud. Yeah. So we recorded that. You prepared it in the kitchen right here, and it was to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the tailgate. Ooh, do you want to explain well, it to me? Yeah, man? so... Traditionally, you use uh, like a taro leaf and you bake it with coconut cream and your pork and onions and garlic and and you just uh, you let it bake and it all melts so the flavors just culminate together. Mm-hmm. So here we use spinach because we don't have a lot of taro mm-hmm. leaf, okay. right? So you can adapt to it, but you can put fish in it too. So you have fish la la or chicken la la. And we had the pork that day. Yeah, pork. I mean, traditionally, they bury it into the ground, right? You do it that yeah, way. Yeah, so every time you cook a pig, you don't yeah. want to waste that heat 
on the rocks. Yes, so sir. you throw in mm-hmm. breadfruit and bananas and fish and, yeah. and mm-hmm. lao lao mm-hmm. for palusami, which is uh, just the coconut cream and the taro leaf so you can dip your food in it. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to waste the heat. So you have everything ready, prepared ahead of time, throw it all in there, cover it up. And then nothing gets wasted on the island. Yeah, is that that that's, nothing. that's a Samoan thing? That's a yeah, yeah, but well, all South Pacific. Uh, that, 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 that was my real Polynesian that was actually culture my real for question. sure. And yeah. that's the thing that, that uh, and I never really paid attention to this too much. And uh, it wasn't until I got older to where I realized that the influence, the Pacific Islander influence mm-hmm. growing up in Chula Vista is ridiculous, right? Like, it's quiet, though. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a soft influence where we already know uh, uh, the, the, the Mexican influence, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, 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 but the Pacific Islander influence is so subtle almost that you don't even know that you're absorbing it, you know. And uh, it's crazy that that my favorite barbecue, really, when it boils down to it, man, I like that Pacific Islander barbecue, man. And, and you know, I like the flavors, uh, but the I'm huli, just— The huli chicken. The huli mm-hmm. huli chicken. That's yeah. one of my favorite dishes from JJ's, man, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, and then as I got older, it just started becoming more— part of my life you know what i'm saying uh in terms of the people that i associated with and then the the, the the um obviously you know my wife and friends and family and all that kind of stuff um but for you hey baby but but for you though um uh, uh i guess at what point in time um or i guess the, the correct thing is baby you know i'm shooting a podcast right now i can't do this right now we're on video and everything and we got um cameras rolling so she, 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 she don't, she don't give a damn. She don't give a damn. Right, <laughs> man. All right. So, so a, a good question that I that I have for you is what, as far as I, I and and this may s- just seem weird to you, but uh, what do you identify as? Like who, when you think of yourself, or when you describe yourself to someone, or even when you describe yourself to somebody else, what do you see, uh, uh, um, or what do you tell people that you are? Well, I identify as a as a Christian. I identify as an American. And I identify as a someone. All at once, or do you feel like you have to kind of like compartmentalize? I, don't know, I just identify as me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. you know, yeah. It's, we That's were talking about are, right? that yeah. last yeah. night. It's like I wasn't raised to see who you know. Is that who's that guy identifying? Like I yeah. said, I didn't even know you were black right. until we grew Me up. Neither. I think we've already had this discussion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we talk about that. Yeah. It's well, hard because there are a lot of. Well, when, when you we, grew we, up right here, that that's how you were. Yeah, Chula Vista. Chula Vista. Yeah. Yeah. I'm born so I guess I, You know, I and originally you we were just Chula Vista. Exactly. Go ahead, exactly. Give me a shot, baby. Yeah, so, um, um, and that's a big part of our upbringing, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, not really having yeah. that. And it's not until you get out to the real world that it's you start seeing that. Here. And then and one of the things that I'm always noticing now is that with my daughter, um, I don't even say half anymore or a quarter. Mm-hmm. Hey, all right, now. all right, time for you to go inside. <laughs> can't do that because I'm in the middle of a TV show. Oh, she knows you're in the middle of a TV I show. Know, she wants to be that. on the camera. Yeah. Jesus, I'm getting in that video. <laughs> I'm tired of watching these videos without me, you know. No, you got to go inside now because you're not paying attention. You can sit there if you want and watch. Mm-mm. Last one and then go. Not in my mouth? No. COVID. No, not my nose. <laughs> I'm on camera, baby. Okay? All right, bye. Bye. All cured. Huh? You're all cured up now. Yeah, I'm all good now. Yeah. But even with her now, I don't even say half anymore, or we don't say quarter, because it starts sounding ridiculous. Like you know, you're black Pacific Islander, and then you know that's it. You know, so. But I see. I I don't know anything about the German side. I knew because I was raised with Samoa, so yeah. I guess that's why I consider yeah. more of myself Samoan. Yeah. I, I mean, I my guess mom's, you, my mom's German and my dad's Mexican. It's the same. Yeah. And I don't really. Do you know what side do you know? Mex my Mexican, Mexican side, side, yeah. I mean, but no disrespect to my German side. Right. I just wasn't too just don't introduced know it, yeah. to that side yeah. too much. I'm yeah. half as well. Yeah. You know that? I think everybody's dark got skin and light skin. Yeah. Are you? Yeah, I'm half dark skin black and half light skin black. He's got jokes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, man, uh, uh, I think that's a, a real interesting aspect, man. Just uh, again, not 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 something that you've ever really wore on your sleeve, but it's something that's been part of you and something that you share with me. So it's always dope, man, uh, uh, being there with you on that journey. And uh, I always joke around because even when you were here, you know, break out the lava lava, I got to put one on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean, so he used to <laughs> do this back in the day. Uh, 
put on, put that on. And so we're chilling, you know. I'm a lava, wearer. lava. Is that that material? Yes. Yeah, so yes. Yeah. Okay. So like, I got a uh, my my uh, a lot of my family's Indonesian. They call them sarongs. Yeah. Yeah. Similar. Huh? Same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so many, hot over yeah, there. I got so many of those. Where those things, are school, man. you know, yeah, yeah. and uh, it's just it's just comfortable. Yeah. A lot lighter. What do you miss the most about Samoa? The, I think I I just miss the whole. You don't have to worry about anything else. You know, it's like you're not worrying about no, politics. Yeah, you're not worrying nice, about. Yeah. I mean, there's local politics yeah. everywhere you go, right? Yeah. And you gotta play. But people are just more genuine. It's, yeah. You can. Uh, you can just really tell a person who they are. Uh, I don't know. Just to me, it's just it's just more real. I just kind of unplug from all of the hustle and bustle. Right. It's just kind of more relaxing. Yeah, that's you. You mentioned yeah. relaxing. Every time we go back to the islands. That's one thing that I, I take away um, that, that's uncomparable to anywhere else is is you lose track of time. Everyone doesn't really pay attention to time over there. Right. Everyone is so laid back when you hear, no worries, bro, that's no worries, awesome. bro. Yeah, yeah, it's like, awesome. no, there's yeah. no one wears watches. And there's more focus <laughs> on a relationship. Yeah. My relationship with you is going to yeah. be my main focus, not, mm, not yeah. uh, what you're all about and what your you know, status, how you believe this and how you believe that. It's, it's more about yeah. how's your heart, man? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, are you real with me? And that's why I love the islands. Yeah. Man. And then once you get an islander's uh in the islander's favor, like a Samoan, yeah. you know, a brother, you that, that guy's gonna die for you. That's right. That's how a buddy of mine is um, yeah. Jake Vasili, he's a Samoan and, and his family took me in when I was sixteen. So I got to live in, in, in a Samoan household and That's a right. Samoan tradition. Oh yeah. yeah. The, you in the Yulis too. <laughs> I mean, just that whole couple of years of my of my young adulthood, you know, taught me a lot about family yeah. and about um, loyalty and food yeah. <laughs> and that's where i got some of my ideas of cooking from uh but yeah definitely um see that within the culture and that's mm -hmm. what stands out to me the most yeah yeah um i second that you know i i, I might have known jake before you actually i don't know because I, I, I knew him before i went to school and just because of royal school right. playing in royal school yeah, you live on school before, and I, used to, used to, I used to see him out there all the time um you know one of the great guys in the neighborhood um you uh are and I don't know, get it all mixed up, but uh, you just uh, recently had a ceremony that I don't know if you call it inducted you into chiefhood. What would you call it? You were actually yeah, breaking so, down like the different levels of it. And right. I know this probably sounds quite different levels of chiefhood, right? So, you got different chiefism. levels of chief. I mean, what chief. Chiefism? Chiefism? Chiefism works? All right. Well, it's chief a, is such a, a, a wide... It's a broad term, Yeah, right? it's a broad term, and it could go um, for so many different cultures, so many different uh, uh, statuses. Right. right. So the, the Samoan word, Muausa, which was the title that I was given, and there's a lot of different titles. Mm. It comes down to where your family's from, and and it's kind of been... It's kind of been uh, abused in Samoa, the, the whole title of nobility, because... Now every single family's creating titles where that's not the case on the title I got. So I went through a Sofai, which is a coronation ceremony, and it was through King Malatoa's royal bloodline. And the only place that you can get that blessing and that coron go through that ceremony is in a place called Sapa Sapali'i Savai. It's on the island of Savai, the biggest island, it's bigger than Hawaii and uh or bigger than Oahu. That island for sure. Um, and so we traveled back about three years ago and took the whole family and we had a, each family had to nominate chiefs from their side, from the eight different tribes of the Somali Atoa family, um, Aonu'u and Parisi. And once you, once you're in that position, you hold that position till you die. And so there are different levels. So I'm a high chief, but underneath me there's Seuli. Uh, the Rock went back under the same family. He got Seuli title a couple years before me. Um, but you hold that title until you <coughs> die, and then it becomes vacant. Then Parliament actually records all of these because that gives you heir to land and, mm -hmm. and, and title to pass on to other family members. So it's important when you... Uh, when you're in Samoa is a lot more important than you know here people just oh yeah chief ah, Moana hey <laughs> you know right, you're right. welcome oh bro hey. <laughs> that, that's me right there right. Yeah, I, me. I watched Moana with my daughter and it was mm -hmm. one of the most amazing things because you don't really have Disney flicks where people look like you know right. nobody uh, that was a legit film 
And that's yeah. what. So didn't I ask you that? Didn't yeah. I call you up because yeah. uh, I, we were so amazed by that movie. Incorporated and, the Samoan language in there. And, yeah. Uh huh. And uh, uh, so I I called him up and I was like, Hey, what do you think about it? Because I thought it was amazing, and uh, uh, it was beautiful for my daughter and my wife and us to sit around and 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 really enjoy that culture. And that's kind of one of the, one of the reasons why I've even adop- adopted that culture to a degree. Because um, it's a it's an amazing influence on my daughter, who you know, I mean, she's she's just as much that as she is black, right? Um, uh, but you know, me without knowing, I had to call you up and say, hey, so what do you think about that movie? You know, did you feel like it was authentic? Because you know, did you know, did Disney can get it wrong? Mm-hmm. You right, know, right. they're not perfect. Mm-hmm. And uh, you said, yeah, you said yeah. you loved it, and I, I think was like, with wow. the Rock being involved in that, yeah, he had a right. major he wasn't influence. Let that go. <laughs> yeah, everything he touches gold, and and no. him him being a chief himself. He's right. not going to go into a project like that and, and let it miss the mark. Well, we know that now, yeah. yeah. And see, I didn't know I didn't know that much about him until uh, re- after that because I really uh. started looking at. I started doing research mm-hmm. on that on the twenty whole million that's he makes what, per that's film. What, that's really good too. That's what oh, brought yeah. me to the rock. That's what, <laughs> that's what kind of brought me to the rock. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that guy's yeah. got a lot of yeah. He's actually, a lot of talent. He's stand up. Yeah. He's a stand up guy. I'm, I'm proud he represents the someone. And as he's so he's half Samoan, half black. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and now, his mom's Samoan who lives in. Yeah, there was a movie about him actually. Yeah, I think, like, yeah. Or a TV show where he shows his whole like yeah, documentary. Yeah. Oh, was it? His, family, his dad and his, his upbringing. It's called yeah, yeah. I think it's called The Rock actually. Or no, it can't be. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Well, why not? Cuz I think there's already a show called The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, anyways, yeah. You, but you uh, <clears throat> brought me into uh, uh, say I was uh, celebration. Um, mm-hmm. So we were sitting up in the nosebleeds, and it was the weirdest thing. It's a weird experience, man, because obviously I'm not related to anybody in that uh, family. And uh, 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 J- Jay came and got me out of the nosebleeds, and was like. I didn't even know you were there. Yeah, I, I turned around and I, I just turned around. And I saw you guys up yeah, there. Yeah, I didn't chill thinking about that day. And man. he was yeah. uh, ukulele was going. And so yeah. I shot a video crazy. that I posted about that day, and the reason why I got was able to get so close because he was like, "Hey, you guys come down here with us," and I was like, mm. right. "You know," and he was like, "No, no, you my family. Yeah, this is my family." There. And so we went down there, and it was a real surreal experience. I can remember exactly how I felt because, say, I was uh, a legend. Um, Obviously, and you know, you bump into him in the city. So there's you rarely in San Diego have such a big celebrity just mm-hmm. be a local. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So to bump into him and to see him, I'm not really starstruck by a lot of people, but for him, I, with him, I was. I ain't gonna lie. You know, I was starstruck, and then for that being a relative, and then you bringing us closer during that period of time to um, the actual uh, uh, um, reality of it yeah. was a really powerful moment man and so uh and that was the fourth funeral we went we went to the one at qualcomm we had the family yeah, there's probably all kinds of different we had the ceremonies. family funeral then we had family and friends like close friends and then we had another public one and then place yeah. isn't big enough to right it everybody. wasn't and then they actually went to qualcomm which was a great which idea crazy man there was a lot of love shown for him yeah. man, man. And that was i helped the family I remember like that day yeah. yesterday yeah it was i went was to his surreal. grave site just a couple of days ago where is that located? Uh, it's at Eternal Hills up oh, in uh, Oceanside. Oceanside. Yeah. And um, his parents' house are getting refurbished right now. They're putting a big kitchen and stuff in the back. But uh, Mary, his sister, just had a big thing for CTE, a big fundraiser. Yeah, I've seen that on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing, man. I mean, that's part of our culture. And, um, you know, I get, I was just, kind of, I, I felt blessed to be that close you know yeah. and uh i was fighting I, did, I i didn't i didn't at the time i didn't feel comfortable and then you know jason was like nah man and so we got down there and it was uh just an amazing experience to feel connected to yeah. what was going on you know oh man it was it was it was overload you know just sitting yeah. there kind of like just in awe and then you know it was uh i i was taking videos of like you know guys uh relatives playing the ukulele yeah. and singing and i mean with Oh, the full heart you know what I mean just it was something that I've never experienced before yeah, and, never and to be like right like down there it was like it, it was and really let me ask you guys experience. because it's totally different for me it's all I know is that concept of family I mean once you're family you're you know what I mean friends you got a lot of friends that become more family than your own family yeah. and I don't know if that happens with everyone but yeah. I know you're probably experiencing oh, your someone friend that's 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 it's exactly how it yeah. is I mean there's so many 
so many friends that I have that I consider family before I say they're friends. They're right. homes. That's why we, you say, we what's, talk, we, what's we, up, we, fam? Yeah, like, we, you we fam, are, not yeah. what's up, friend. It's yeah. what's up, fam, mm-hmm. to my fam. The family, not necessarily we're related blood-wise, yeah. but, I mean, I would die for you I like a family member. Come, I would we, I think we all extend come, my yeah. neck for you like a family member, so you're my family. Right. You know, that's how I It's sad to me when people don't have that because, I mean, that's really what I live for. I don't live for all the other tokens and things in life, I, I live for my family. Yeah. Yep. Jay Monga, not your ordinary white boy. You <laughs> 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 are. No, man, you're an amazing dude, man. Ooh, I mean, thank and, you, man. And, and, I appreciate and, 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 and to be, to, to have grown up with you from such a sh- young age and to have all these experiences that I didn't know I was getting with you, and I have two low quad trees. One right there, one in the front, and the reason why I got those low quad trees is because a memory that I have with him at Bomb Vivant, right next to Point Robin Hood, off of Brandywine, where I'd ride my bike there, <laughs> and uh, we would do all kind of shit. But um, uh, and my mom used to go crazy. Go there, you guys are going buck wild or whatever. Yeah, shit, didn't know half the stuff. No, <laughs> but we used to climb fences and climb roofs and pick people's low quad trees and. Um, we climb trees <laughs> Climb trees And we would get these big bags of loquats And then we just sit back all day and eat them man. It's Free the, food It was the best tasting fruit And they were letting just, waste just, yeah. a, just a little day of theft in the backyard A little, 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 you little know? bit of theft a little People wasting it They don't know what they <laughs> They didn't even Yeah they didn't even You care. can go to Bon Vivant right now And people don't even know yeah. That's loquats in there So I got a kumquat tree And then Jay came over So you, you This was like a couple years ago Before, before the pandemic Right and you came out here, and I was like, yo, man, these kumquats don't taste right. And he's like, yeah, because they're kumquats. Yeah. The, you, the ones we used to eat were loquats, and you had brought a bag with you. Right. And we ate them, and I was like, damn, I got to go get me some loquat tree. So there we go. It tastes a little Here bit different. Go. Yeah, it sure. tastes like mangoes, man. Yeah. Kind of, sort of. I thought those were native of Chula Vista. They, uh, well, yeah. Are they? <laughs> they might be. No, I, I, think, I, think, I think they're, they're growing be, them out there. I think they're Asian. Yeah, uh, they're Asian. Yeah. <laughs> They just but had a nice little spot. Low quads and kumquats. Yeah, yeah. Different, yeah. yeah, they're different. Yeah, they're I didn't different. Know that. Yeah. So, all right, man, uh, we take a quick break. Come back. We'll talk about that military experience, man. Um, we're gonna get deeper before we. It's, it's, it's gonna get deeper before we get to the art, but this is an important part of it because um, these things really do intertwine. Um, and I just mm-hmm. think it's amazing how you connected the two. It is an amazing story. It's cool to be um, have a front row seat to watch it develop, and. Um, so every time you do a little piece of artwork, man, and I see you post it, uh, I'm geeking because I know the story behind it. And that's why I say they all have connective tissue because if you you will get to the actual production of the artwork and where it comes from. Mm-hmm. And then to be able to watch them, sit back and do it, um, just add it to the experience. So um, we're going to take a quick break, come back, and we're going to talk about uh, cool, cool. Uh, 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 your Army experience and, uh, you know, as, as, as deep as you're willing to go. Right. Word them up Damn That was perfect time man I'm over just right yeah, yeah. Oh, damn. So what do you do Now with that So your Real? card is Your card is full Nah it's just this guy 